So today we're going to be taking a look at a scenario where Germany ends up winning World War II and invading the United States. So if Germany invaded the United States, obviously that means they had to have won World War II, and we'll be updating this map here in a second. But first, we have to talk about this scenario because it's an interesting one. So obviously Germany at that point has taken over all of Europe and has moved into Canada and into the United States. And in that case, it's probably not looking too good for the world, but would they actually be able to invade the United States? We're going to be looking at that today. And if you guys do enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. If you're a creator on YouTube, you know that January freaking sucks for channels because of the post-Christmas ad situation. So uh, all the support is greatly appreciated right now. But aside from that, let's go ahead and jump straight into the scenario. All right, so I have colored in the map to the best of my ability. I probably forgot something and I don't want to hear in the comments, but uh, I also I just basically colored Africa all blue because yeah. But anyway, uh, this is our scenario where Germany has successfully taken out a majority of Europe. And I know some of the borders aren't right down here. I'm not worried about it. I really just focused on the main contributors in World War II, which was, was Germany, Italy, and Japan. But even then, Japan doesn't have all their land either. But yeah. Operation Sea Lion was a success. The United Kingdom is taken out of the war. And with complete control over Europe, Germany no longer has to uh, occupy the coastal areas of France. So Vichy France just becomes fully a country. And Germany is able to remove some assets from France. Now, from here, of course, we have everything going on in Africa. But for the scenario to realistically happen, we have to ignore Africa completely because otherwise, uh, we would see the British and French in Africa could take all of these colonies over. And from there, maybe, you know, work their way into Italy like they did in real life. Although here, the United States wouldn't be helping them, so I'm not sure how plausible that is. But like I said, we do have to stretch some things out for this scenario to be realistic. One of those things being, of course, uh, Germany not invading the Soviet Union. Because if they did that, then they wouldn't be able to go over here. So Germany never invades the Soviets, which is likely how they were able to take over the British Isles. Uh, but we do still have the bombing of Pearl Harbor by Japan, and that's why they're in this war. But yeah, this is essentially what we have after Europe falls. It may not look like it in modern day, but and yeah, let's go ahead and just jump straight to the actual war scenario. So Germany is going to send their boats first up to Iceland and completely take out the island. Now, in real life, Iceland was occupied by the British when the Danish government fell. And afterwards, Iceland was given independence, I think. And from here, uh, after they take over Iceland, we have the Germans landing in Greenland and taking over the southern portion of the island. Now, was Greenland was a part of Denmark back then, right? So this should already be blue, but it's not. But they take over the southern part of Greenland and are starting to move their way across the Atlantic Ocean. Now, the United States at this point has withdrawn its troops from Europe and Africa, and uh, that's kind of a big blow for here. They've also withdrawn their troops from the Philippines and other oceanic islands, which leads to the falling of the Philippines themselves. And uh, this doesn't go well for the Filipino people because the United States has simply abandoned them. And Japan is going to be kind of active in this video, but they also are going to be fighting off the Raj into uh, Dutch Malaysia, uh, the Papua New Guinea, and Australia, and also Dutch Indonesia. Why is that not colored? I'm sure somebody named like some kid named like Terence or something is. Just, went to the comments you forgot to color in indonesia well there you go buddy there it is anyway yeah the japanese they'll, they'll be a player but they have a lot to worry about over here anyway over to the united states germany is once again making its rounds in north america now landing over here in newfoundland and with this america will fully mobilize its defensive army with the, you know just kind of stays in the states they will move up north along this border here and some of them will even go into canada to help them out but as of now the germans have landed in british newfoundland and they are moving around even taking over this island here labrador right and eventually they gain themselves a large chunk of canada now something to know about canada at this point they're still the dominion of canada of the united kingdom so they're not a fully independent country and even then they are not a strong country at this point in real life they're you know they're capable but in this scenario they're not so what we really have here is a bunch of British troops defending this area, and even then Britain as a whole doesn't exist anymore. I mean, it does, but just not everywhere else. I mean, it does, but just not here. But once, you know, a country loses its central island, in this case, the United Kingdom, they lose pretty much all of their power and a lot of control over their troops. You'd be surprised. So America at this point is fighting a 1v3, or I guess a 1v2 and a half. Uh, but soon enough, it will be a 1v3. And you can complain a lot in the comments if you want. I know that Germany invading the United States isn't too capable or plausible in this timeline. Uh, but once again, we had to bend some reality, you know. Uh, the Germans never invaded the Soviets, never lost those, what is it, 3 million troops? Those 3 million troops, you know, probably like a couple million of them were put in on the British Isles. But, but there's still probably less casualties here than there were here. And this is also a lot closer to home than here. So... 
yeah, and you can also use this as a giant naval base if you really want to. So there's really a lot of benefits to having Britain in, in this case. One, you don't have the British Army. Two, it's closer to America. And three, well, it's the British Isles. Once you have those, you can really much rule the world. And well, three, it's the British Isles. So, you know, once you have that, you can start an empire and control a quarter of the world. All right, I'm getting carried away again. We have Germany doing more German things, going into Quebec now. Now, the thing about invading North America is North America is freaking huge. I, I think a lot of people underestimate it because, you know, Asia and Africa are so big, but North America is number three, you know? And the, they have two of the top three largest countries in the world there, Canada and America. And, you know, Mexico is also a pretty big country as well. And, you know, map projection does go into this. Uh, South America is not this big in real life. It's a lot smaller. And North America is a lot bigger than it. Germany now going down south. They are reaching toward the border of the United States. And they do have a lot of their assets in this area, which does lead to a lot of Canadian resistance up north. And a lot of pushback. However, the land that they are retrieving is not very uh, valuable at all. So they kind of let it slide. You know, the Canadians, they do take back a lot of square kilometers of land, but it doesn't affect the Germans in any way because they're all down here and they're fighting the Americans now, but not fully because the Americans are focusing on their border now. They are pretty much not in here anymore. They're more so down here now, which leads to the Germans being able to go after the Canadians and even link up with the Hudson Bay, which completely severs Quebec from the rest of Canada. Now, I'm sure Quebec is happy about this. However, there are Nazis in Southern Quebec, and that's not fun. Unless Quebec is into that kind of stuff. I don't know. I'm not Canadian. I wouldn't know. I would hope not. Uh, but yeah, Canada is at this point getting bodied by Germany and co. And I do want to put an emphasis on this is a, like maybe 2 million troops here. Now, transporting 2 million troops by sea sounds insane. Going across the Atlantic Ocean with 2 million troops requires so much more than you would think. It requires so many, um, what do you transport troops in? What is it called? Is it convoy? Con Corvettes? What? I, I don't know. But it requires so many of those. And then it also requires so much oil. You need to feed all those soldiers while they're at sea. You need, you know, water. You need, you just need a lot. So really, realistically crossing the Atlantic like this is not plausible in World War II. With the invention of the of the nuclear bomb, which we might see here in a second, now it makes it easier to invade the America, but it doesn't make it easier to go across the water. So on the uh, mention of nukes, the Manhattan Project is pretty much complete in New York. At this point, it's like, what, 1944? You know, they might be thinking about testing it soon. Uh, you know, Japan got a taste of that in 1945. Uh, but we do have to remember that uh, Germany, when they started losing, that's when the uh, scientists fled to America. But they were also pretty close to getting there. And at this point, they are evenly close with the United States. So really, it's who can make the bomb first and drop it first. Because whoever does that is going to have an advantage. Now, there's a scenario where they, you know, complete it at the same time. And they nuke each other to oblivion. And uh, honestly, Germany would have the advantage there because they have Greenland. And they can probably have the plane take off from there. Land somewhere in Newfoundland and take off from there. And drop it on whatever targets that they have. Whereas for America, it's a little bit more, uh, it's a, actually, it's a lot more complicated. You might be able to use Portugal if they allow it, but even then, this is a long flight from here to Berlin. Your best case scenario would probably be going through Algeria. Issue there is that, uh, well, you know, Italy's right there and they can shoot it down. So really, uh, Germany is very safely guarded in here in Central Europe, whereas the United States, uh, having, you know, Nazi Germany here, it leaves them very open. And air superiority is also a huge issue at this point because you need to drop the bomb from a plane. You can't just have an ICBM like we do in modern day. Little boy and fat man, they were dropped from planes. They were not, you know, ICBMs. So the bad Germans, they go ahead and go around Quebec. Um, Quebec, they might rebel a little bit. They might try to. Ultimately, Germany is going to end up with them all. And just because it's fully colored in doesn't mean that it's necessarily completely under the country's control. For example, China is fully colored in over here. There are not Japanese troops in Xinjiang. That is very unlikely. In fact, China probably looks something like this, realistically. But Japan is not actively fighting this half, so we just colored in completely. And the Chinese government at this point also doesn't exist, so that's also another factor. Like, you know, the British government doesn't really exist on the mainland anymore, so they're fully colored in, even though, you know, there probably are German troops all around this entire island. But my main point is that Quebec isn't completely taken, but for the simplicity of the video and your eyes, it is. Now they are making landings over here in New Brunswick. I need to touch up on my Canadian provinces. They take over Nova Scotia. No, this is New Brunswick. This is Nova Scotia. They take over that area and then are on the border of Maine. Shit, says 
uh fdr as he dies from polio harry truman's here what's he gonna do uh-oh we're losing more land and the nazis are in maine time to resign and steps the next president who's the next president actually i'm not too sure it would probably be whoever the speaker of the house was which was a democrat from texas named T oh sam ryan so he becomes the next president apparently he was one of the most influential speakers in history who was uh, who held office from 1940 to 1947 so he becomes president and with his newfound power declares the manhattan project a success they don't even test it in the trinity site they load it up onto a plane and the bomb is off to portugal now they make a stop in bermuda and then they make a stop over here in these islands and then make a stop in portugal so it's not just one flight but actually did planes at that point have that capability i'm not sure but they're in portugal and uh germany doesn't know about it which is kind of good for them so anyway new york city just got bombed yeah the germans beat them to it uh but the good thing for the united states is that they have a nuclear bomb in portugal and there's a couple more planes loaded up to fly out with around two more. That's right, they rushed the hell out of it. You know, there were only two bombs in 1945, but now there's three. Little Boy and Fat Man are yet to be shipped, so this one is just... We're gonna name it Trinity, for the sake of the Trinity site. And DC just got nuked. Okay, they need to hurry. With two of the largest cities on the eastern coast gone, the USA is... Well, they're kind of collapsing. New York City, the impact that that would have on the United States in 1940, that would be huge. And to just lose it? um that kind of sucks now the germans they do push in rapidly however it the united states army does quickly bounce back and honestly i'm thinking now this video is very unrealistic but i, I don't care this is content enjoy it all right so the nuclear bomb that was in portugal has now set off and well ugh, spain i forgot about spain so spain at this point was a fascist country so really what they would have to do is they would have to go up and around like that but at the same time they need air superiority and getting that over Nazi-held Germany is very unlikely. So we have to bend the rules of reality here because I said so. The U.S. plane that is carrying the bomb is now over the area in Germany over here. However, it is shot down over here in Germany. But the good thing for the United States is that it's shot down with the nuclear bomb armed because they kind of knew they were getting shot down. So once the plane hits the ground, we also get a nuclear explosion. This is kind of near Frankfurt, but also kind of in Belgium, so whoops. They kind of mobilized their home air force, so this doesn't happen again. And with the, you know, Little Boy and Fat Men coming across the ocean, they are both shot down over the ocean, and those bombs are never, ever dropped. But with the two drops that happened on America, the United States also puts a bigger emphasis on guarding the ocean because that is where those two planes came from. The U.S. was too worried about its own home air force over here, that it completely forgot to regard in the ocean. And since DC and New York are both on the water, they, well, both got bombed. At this point though, the president was moved out of DC. He's probably somewhere in Texas or maybe even Los Angeles. But on the topic of Los Angeles, we forgot about a certain someone, haven't we? I didn't forget about them because now is their perfect entrance moment. You know, maybe they took over Dutch Malaysia and Dutch Indonesia and maybe New Guinea as well, but we're not too worried about that because at this point they should be worried about the United States and they are. The Japanese make a landing in Alaska, except I'm not exactly sure where they would make a landing at. Uh, let's have them make a landing near Anchorage. They are going to stick to the coastal parts and that is mainly because Alaska is cold and there's a lot of mountains there. But the Japanese surely do make their way through the Northwest of America and eventually they get all the way down to Vancouver and Vancouver Island and take over that island. They then go down and are in Washington state. And at this point, the United States and its civilians are in full panic mode. We see a large number of civilian armies rise up who aren't in compliance with the US Army. And really what we have here is a bunch of Nazis versus the US Army and people with guns, because that's what happens when you invade America, you get civilian armies. Well, actually we don't fully know that because no one's ever done it, but uh, it is pretty practical and it's pretty probable. What isn't probable though is what's happening here, but we have to suck it up and allow it to happen. All right, at this point, the states of Massachusetts, uh, Massachusetts, Massachusetts. Mm. Yeah, we're gonna leave that in the video, aren't we? Massachusetts, shoot. Every time I go to record, I just forget English. I swear I can speak normally most of the time, but whenever I record, it just doesn't work. Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, MA, Rhode Island, Connecticut, they're all gone. New York state is pretty much gone. New York city doesn't exist anymore. So New York state is gone because no one lives here. 
Toronto is gone, Ottawa is gone. It's really not looking good over here in the Northeast. However, the US Army is at this point a brick wall right here. So they do advance a little bit further. They even go into Pennsylvania. But after that, they meet a brick wall, which is known as the Patriot Front. Wait, no, that's a bad thing in real life. We can't call it that. The US Patriot Army and the US Army. They are holding a very good line right there. Meanwhile, over here in the Pacific West, not doing such a thing, Seattle is the first major city to be occupied. Well, no, second major, right? Second biggest and most major city to be occupied by the uh, the Nazis because Boston exists. So yeah, they're number two. New York doesn't exist once again. And yeah, ouch. So once again, this is almost impossible to happen in real life. So many things would have to go right for Germany and has and most everything has gone right minus the one nuke that was dropped on them everything has gone perfect for them everything subsequently has gone wrong for the united states nothing has gone right for them they haven't had a single victory in this war everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong that's how extreme this scenario has to be we had to have everything going right for germany and everything going wrong for america you know dc was nuked that's probably the worst thing that can happen to the united states because they lose both you know their president which in this case wasn't lost but they lose the capital they lose the white house they lose the pentagon which you know was just built at this point so that was a big waste of money wasn't it and they lose a bunch of history too i mean of course you know dropping a nuke on germany that erases history but uh this vaporizes history in the united states and a lot of the history was in new york and washington dc two major cities at this point so with those two cities gone, America is really crippled. We also have to talk about the shortages that they're probably going to be having from this. I doubt the Soviet Union is helping out the United States at this point because Germany has a non-aggression pact with them and they wouldn't want to do anything that would, well, make the Soviets angry. So Germany really has this checkmate on the United States. And to make it worse and to once again stretch this scenario even further for everything that could go wrong, does everyone remember the telegram that was sent to Mexico in World War I? Yeah, the thing that ultimately got the United States involved in the war. Well, it went through again. Now, at this point in World War II, I'm not sure if Mexico would want to join either side because I do believe they were doing dealing with something on their own. So Mexico joining this scenario is unrealistic. That's an unrealistic aspect of this. And there hasn't been that many unrealistic aspects so far other than, you know, the Germans crossing the Atlantic. Uh, the Soviets not getting... Well, that's not unrealistic. Actually, if the Germans just never invaded the Soviet Union, they would all honestly have a better chance of winning the war but yeah speaking of unrealistic you know uh, africa not happening that's pretty unrealistic japan not going after all of the pacific unrealistic the uk following unrealistic so yeah there's a few of them uh this is just another one of those and yes i was being sarcastic when i said there hasn't been that many realistic scenarios anyway mexico joining the war they immediately get a lot of land from the united states the u.s was not expecting this that's because a they had a lot of their troops up here you know protecting themselves you know they don't want to lose any more states but B, because they wouldn't expect Mexico to join the war. And I do want to emphasize once again, Mexico joining this scenario is extremely unlikely. You know, at this point, the Mexican-American War happened pretty much, no, 100 years ago. And I do believe that Mexico had good relations with the U.S. at this point. If not, they're having improving relations because Mexico did fight in World War II on the side of the U.S. And they were even a catalyst for a lot of other of these Latin American countries to join in on the war. So them being on the side of the Axis is the most unrealistic aspect of this video. And I'm not being sarcastic by that because I do not believe that Mexico would have any intention of joining Germany. Uh, but if I am wrong, do correct me because uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. But... That's what Google said, so that is what is word, right? Anyway, this is a game changer because now the US has to withdraw some troops from these front lines and send them down south. They did this mostly on the Japanese side, which is probably a mistake because Japan is a lot more fresh than Germany, and this subsequently leads to them losing a lot of their coastal land, most notably uh, cities like Salem and Portland. At this point, uh, the, uh, what is this place called again? Cascadia is gone and uh, you know Los Angeles is right there. So that's not good Also, we have country, cities like Houston and Dallas being on the uh, edge of dying and with the withdrawal of some troops over here We see that New Jersey and Pennsylvania start to lose a lot of land Eventually we see flags being raised in Philadelphia, which aren't American and at this point the United States is really considering surrendering Can I emphasize how big of a loss that Philadelphia would be for the United States as well? Um, and also how big of a moral blow it would be for the people of the US, of the United States because Philadelphia is a very historical country, city in this country 
uh, you know, it was the original capital of it during the 13 uh, colonies stage. I'm apparently not sane right now. And there's just a lot of histories, a lot of things that happened there. So by losing that city, they lose a lot of population. And they lose a very important city and they lose morale within their armies. At this point, bombing runs across the East Coast are very frequent as well as California. And air superiority is really back and forth at this point because, you know, having all of Germany's air force over here is just another unrealistic aspect. The same thing with Japan, having all their air force over here is unrealistic, but it's something that needs to happen for this to actually happen realistically. Germany cannot just use brute manpower like they did against the Soviets. That doesn't work here because of the ocean. They have to, you know, move their troops across an ocean and that doesn't always work well when there's another Navy there to blow up those ships. So yeah, a lot, just, there's just a lot of unre unrealism that has to go into this. So we are eventually going to reach ourselves, our, ourselves, we're going to reach the end of this war after the loss of the great state of Ohio over to the Germans and the fall of the not so great state of Maryland. Jersey and Delaware both fall as well as the part of Maryland and part of Virginia over here. And in the last battle of the United States is existence in Fredericksburg, Virginia. We have the surrender of Fredericksburg, which ends World War II. The United States pulls out of the war. Well, they basically surrender. And, you know, Canada was basically just a husk at this point. So they also surrender. And with the two major contributors out of the war, this leads to a chain reaction, which eventually leads to all blue countries surrendering. And we have a German victory in World War II. Now, what would a peace treaty look like? Well, I would have to draw up a whole peace treaty for World War II. So we will very simply go over this and uh, yeah, there's, there's just, there's, I don't, I don't know if I can do this actually. Germany annexes all the lands in one front. Well, they annex what they have here. France most likely does lose some, like they lose Alsace-Lorraine, but I don't see them losing too much other land, like maybe the areas around Dunkirk. But other than that, I don't think they lose too much land. Uh, we see probably the United Kingdom getting broken up into its different states or I guess what the countries uh yugoslavia gets split from everyone around it so a little bit goes to here and then you know so on so forth italy probably gets a majority of it though africa we're not going to get into africa over here in asia japan you know they get china and indochina uh they also get a bunch of these islands i think australia and new zealand leave this war unscathed uh the guianas they leave unscathed america for the most part is probably gonna leave unscathed too we and if, see, I don't know if Japan could do this, but I think they might be able to get away with taking. Whoa, they might be. Whoa, they might be able to get away with taking over pretty much just Cascadia plus Alaska. I'm not too sure if they contributed enough to do this. And I'm not sure if the United States agrees to this by this point. Can the United States, you know, not agree to this? Do they have a choice? Uh, but for Germany, they take over Newfoundland and Labrador. We also see them taking over the uh, the regions known as Quebec and uh, the, the, the New Brunswick and what's it called? Nova Scotia. So those go over to Germany as either puppet states or just straight territory like the UK had here. Uh, Iceland is annexed by Germany. And as for the United States, who do they lose? I think that realistically, well, this is unrealistic. So maybe this is not realistic because that's what unrealistic means. I think they probably lose New England and that's it. And maybe, you know, maybe they might get broken up and they just might. I'm not too sure if they do. So really, this is up to you guys. Um, But we could see like, you know, at the Mississippi River, or they go something like that. I don't know. But at the Mississippi River, we have, you know, uh, let's see here. We have East America. We have, well, obviously Mexico needs its war gains. So we'll give them a little bit over here. I, I don't think Mexico could take back all that they had because it's simply too much land. Maybe they do. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, maybe that happens. And then we have this area. No. This area going over to like Canada and like some kind of weird German puppet thing happening there. And then we just have, you know, Arkansas plus a few others and Louisiana. Maybe we have like Louisiana because of the Louisiana Purchase. Really, I'm not too sure how you could divide America up at this point because there's just too many different areas. And this is World War II. This is not present day. Obviously, there's a lot of ways you can divide up America nowadays. But back then, there wasn't too many. And yeah, so that is going to do it for today's video. I'm just going to leave it like that. And uh, if you guys did enjoy it. Make sure to show some support. Try and get to 200,000 subscribers by the end of this year, 2024. And uh, that would be nice to get there because we have uh, we have a new goal. 
goals are nice i do want to say um do want i do once again want to say thank you guys for watching this video it really does mean a lot with youtube not youtubing right now but also just yeah thank you guys for watching i appreciate it uh if you have noticed which you might have uh the blue color for the water is different than it normally is and i do want to try that out just in case you guys like it better because this is the normal blue it's kind of bright and turquoise turquoise is turquoise cyan ish also it's just it's just very bright for your screen i think this is a lot better for everyone's eyes and you know i could also just tweak this to make it different so not this blue because that's the same color as the uh the countries you know maybe like a lighter blue like this which i'm pretty sure that's what it actually already was no it was more cyan but yeah i i get distracted i think i have adhd anyway let me know in the comments which blue you like better i'll probably do another one at the beginning of the next video just so you guys you know actually see it in case you don't watch this far which if you have once again thank you i'll see you guys in the next video bye goodbye see ya and of course, thank you to all the super fans, which include Matthew Newman, Yam Yam, Kali Speaks Plays, Shadow Gamer Z, Deva Edits, Mr. Bonk7, Hammer Toad 45, Patrick Clauser, Connor the Gamer, Texan Cowboy Cheese, Poland Country Ball, Yakko, Nevada Garbage Trucks, DW Cool Dude, Soviet Ball, and Serminator. Once again, thank you guys.